Well, hey kids, Grandpa here. How are you doing today? Wow. Well, it is a dark, rainy, and gloomy day up here in Alaska. Just not a great day at all. But, Grandpa's got some great news. Got some really good news. I'm going to title this video, How Not to Buy a Boat, because I am doing this all wrong. Absolutely all wrong. Not a way I would recommend for anybody. Lily, leave the camera tripod alone. Go lay down. <sighs> Lily is in that time of the month for dogs. And um, she's very needy and she's very difficult right now. So I should have bought a male dog. <laughs> I really should have. Oh, well, she's my best friend, so I love her. But she's paying the butt of time. Anywho, you want to see Lily? I don't know if I can do this. Hold on, Matt. See if I can change this up. There she is. Here, Lily. Say hello to everybody. You say hello? No? You gonna hide in your crate? All right, well, what can I tell you? Lily in her crate. She loves her crate. She really does. It's her, kind of her thing, so... Um, yeah, I bought a boat. I bought a boat the worst possible way. Now, guys, I've owned boats before. I've owned a number of boats before. Bought and sold boats many times. Um, I've gone the full gambit, you know, hired the surveyor and did all that kind of stuff. Did it all right. This time I did it all wrong. Um, but with extenuating circumstances. So let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, and, and the reason why I'm doing this video in the way that I am. As a real estate broker, I'm kind of familiar with the transaction, how you go about buying and selling a boat. And um, there's a process that we all use. Some realtors, brokers, boat salespeople will push the envelope a little bit. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about briefly here before I get into the meat of this really kind of exciting video for me. There's a couple uh, in the UK, in England, who have a YouTube channel about sailing, a brand new one, uh, Carl and Jenny Sailing Channel. Uh, Carl and Jenny Sailing, it's in the UK, they're a British couple, you can look them up on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to their, to their channel down below. Um, they're boat shopping right now just like I am, or was. And uh, here's the deal. They they saw a boat that they liked. So, Lily Kennel. You're knocking into stuff. They saw a boat that they liked. So, they called trying to do a little fishing expedition. They called up and said, hey, uh, you know, we're interested in, in coming down. Now, this boat they're looking at is in Greece and they're in England, right? So, they said, well, we're interested in coming down and looking at this boat, but, you know, obviously they don't want to waste their time driving all the way down there, flying all the way down there, going through all that expense if the boat's nothing like what the broker has described. Keep in mind, a lot of these boat brokers and realtors will embellish a little bit on the quality or, or the condition of the property, or in this case, the boat. So, they said, uh, they said to the guy, would the seller be willing to take an offer in the range of X? And they gave a number. Well, the broker jumped the gun and assumed this was a bona fide offer on the property. And so he went and spoke to his, real, his, his client. The client came back to him. Yeah, I'd be interested in doing that. So he set it up for them to come and um, see the boat. And in doing so, he said, well, you know, I'll send you the paperwork. Uh, I'll need a 10% deposit from you, and then the, the seller will meet you there at the boat and go through it and show it to you. And they were like, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. We, we just want to see the boat at this point. We're not ready to buy the boat. We're just wanting to go down and look. So there was a little miscommunications there with them in, um, in the transaction. They, they sort of jumped the gun and presented a picture to the broker that... Uh, the broker took as they were buying, making a bona fide offer. Um, they were just doing fishing. So a little communications breakdown. Again, communications is key, but it's difficult because a lot of people don't know how to go out and buy a boat. Just like people don't know how to go out and buy a house. They don't know, uh, they don't know the systems and rules and whatever that we set up. 
In this particular case, they were really worried because this guy wanted them to send them uh, a, a substantial amount of money, um, like immediately, and um, to secure their position in buying the, the boat. And they were kind of freaked out about, hey, we want to see the boat before we're going to spend that kind of money. Okay, you should understand a couple things. When you're buying a boat, just like buying a house, uh, you can buy a property sight unseen, but make the offer subject to, meaning that as a requirement of this offer, X number of things. In this case, I would say personal inspection. This offer is subject to me actually going down and seeing the boat. Uh, this offer is subject to having the boat surveyed and the boat passing the survey. Those kinds of offers you can make. If you find a boat that, that the description is what you want and it looks good for you, uh, and you're thinking, boy, this is gonna be the ideal boat for me, uh, don't be afraid, especially in this market when there's a lot of boats buying it being sold. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see a boat and think, well, you know, hey, let's drive over there and we'll go look at it. By the time you get there, there's already been two other offers on the boat and it's gone. Don't be afraid if everything on that boat checks all the boxes on your list and it's in the price range and it's a good value and, and it looks on paper like it's a good deal, don't be afraid to negotiate the price right then and there subject to personal inspection and survey. This way you get your foot in the door, you basically lock the boat as being your purchase until such time as you can get down there and look at it and have it surveyed. Um, that's the best way to go about buying a boat, frankly. Don't wait until you get there, you know, next week when you get a chance to drive down there, cause the boat's gonna be gone. If you find a boat that checks all your boxes exactly what you want, something, what you, you know, the boat you've always dreamed of, then, then jump the gun, go for it, but make that offer subject to your personal inspection. That way you can verify everything the realtor or, or boat broker has told you about the property. Uh, and you'll be able to get there and have the, the surveyor go through it and check out what is cool or not cool on the boat. So that was the first part of this video I want to touch base on briefly. Now, <laughs> that said, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Because old grandpa just bought a boat. That's right, I bought a boat. Sight unseen, unsurveyed, made the deal, not subject to anything, um, except actually me paying for the boat. Uh, and that's it. I'm buying a boat uh, only because of the circumstances in this transaction. Now guys, this is where it gets exciting. The boat that I am buying is a CNC 37. This particular boat has been sailed uh, from Texas down to the British Virgin Islands. Uh, it's currently in, uh, in a slip in a marina, I believe. Might be on mooring, uh, on anchor, but I believe it's in a slip in a mooring, or in a marina in Puerto Rico. Now I've not seen the boat. The fellow that sold me the boat uh, has been on the boat up until just recently. Uh, him and uh, a, a very nice lady have been sailing the boat around. And if you haven't pieced it together at this point, yes, I am talking about the Rough Seas, the CNC 37 monohull of sailing doodles fame. That's right. I am buying the original sailing doodles boat. Now, I'm buying it this way for a number of reasons. Before we get into the boat, I'll show you some of the details of the boat here pretty quick and my thoughts about it. But before I get into that, let me say this. Bobby and I have become somewhat kind of online friends. Uh, and, and in today's day and age, you know, that's a lot considering the way social media is today. Um, I've gotten to know him on his channel. He's gotten to know me on my channel. I'm on his live streams. He's on my live streams. We kind of all have the same friends, same people we hang out with. Uh, I, I, I feel a certain amount of trust in Bob and, and, and what he's saying and doing. And I think he's honest with people and with me about what's going on with him. Lily Kennel, you're knocking into the tripod. Kennel, I'm going to lock you in there this time because you keep coming out and getting in trouble. All right, sorry. Uh, anyhow, I trust Bob. And so Bob has been very candid. He told me what is wrong with the boat that he's aware of. There's always can be things that he's not aware of. Uh, but from my perspective, this is an ideal boat for me. I sold my Cal 31 up here in Alaska last summer 
for almost the same price that I'm paying for the Rough Seas. Um, just, just a hair under what I'm paying for Bob's boat. Bob made me a hell of a deal, by the way. A hell of a deal. Um, I, and, and you know, I got nothing but good things to say about him because by him doing that, he's really enabling me to go forward and jump on this and get my channel started. So I, I've got nothing but, but good thoughts and good wishes and good things to say about Bob and Megan of the Sailing Doodles. Um, awesome folks, awesome folks. Uh, but Bob was very candid. He told me what's wrong with the boat. Um, he told me that there are some sails that uh, have some issues. The, the head sail has some issues that needs to be repaired. I got a sail right sewing machine. I can fix that. Um, he said the uh, bilge pump. Now this one actually has me a little worried. The bilge pump needs to be replaced. Bob's not on the boat. The boat's sitting in Puerto Rico with somebody keeping an eye on it. Um, still, I know how things happen to boats, and having a boat without a good working bilge pump scares the hell out of me, frankly. Um, in fact, since I'm not going to be able to close on this and and be able to get down there to Puerto Rico until September, uh, when we're talking hurricane season and all that, uh, I'm really ha I, I got half a mind to see if I can't maybe hire someone to go out there and put a bilge pump in it or have some more conversations. Bob seemed pretty comfortable with it, so. We'll see. Uh, so it needs a bilge pump. It needs uh, the pump for the shower uh, needs some work. I don't know if that's the feed, to feed water to the shower, or the pump for the shower drain. Probably the shower drain. I know Bob was having problems with that. Um, so those are the things that he's aware of that, that was wrong with the boat. Now, I, I have looked through the pictures, watched the videos. I've gone back through and seen all of Bob's videos, including when he had it surveyed. Um, there was a, an issue with... Um, uh, a bulkhead that was a little loose, uh, and I, I have to confirm with him that that was fixed. If not, I'll make sure it is fixed. But uh, so that affects a little bit of the stiffness of the boat, getting that bulkhead secured. Um, other than that, the boat has a dinghy with a good working eight horsepower Mercury outboard. Uh, Bob just put all brand new batteries on it and installed solar panels and put in. Um, you know, these funky LED multicolor, you know, party kind of lights on the thing. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have a disco boat out there with that light on it. Um, what else did he do? Uh, he, he's fixed a overheating problem with the engine. Um, I think that's it. There may be some other things that I'm, I'm forgetting, you know, but maintenance things not really... Uh, improvements to the boat. The improvements to the boat was adding the the batteries and the solar panels and that and the dinghy and the outboard and and so I think I'm getting a great buy. I mean I'm getting a boat that is uh, seven or well, six feet longer than the boat I had before. It's a foot and a half wider. It has air conditioning. It has solar panels and the battery bank. Um, it has a working head. It has running water. Wow. Um, I don't. I live up here in Alaska. I don't have running water in my cabin. I live in a dry cabin, folks. I live in a 16 foot by 16 foot dry cabin. I have to use an outhouse. I have to run down the road to uh, to a truck stop, take showers. I have to go to the well and haul five gallon jugs of water to my cabin to do dishes and, and for water for the dog and me and what have you. So uh, having a sailboat with plumbing and, and you know, turn a faucet and water comes out. How cool is that, huh? That's gonna be fun. Uh, I do have to install a hot water heater on the boat and I will do that pretty quickly. Uh, I want to install a water maker on the boat as well. Uh, it needs some more rod holders because I'm going to put out a bigger fishing spread than probably any of the other sailing cruisers out there have seen. Um, at least five, six, seven lines out at a time. Uh, what else? Well, let's see. Why don't we? Why don't we go to the visuals and let's take a look at the boat before we start. Bob and, and Megan. Bob and Megan did this awesome little video on on the on the thing. They had a lot of fun with it where Megan kept disappearing and reappearing all the different places. You know, the, the beautiful looking girl in the bikini there on the boat shot. Well, they made sure they incorporated that in every single angle on this video. So let's go ahead and cut to that video and then we'll go down through the pictures and we'll look at them. All right, so a lot of you have been requesting uh, a little better view of the boat. Uh, we did one early on in an earlier episode, but I wasn't so good at filming yet and everything, and so we thought we'd do one now. Anyway, we'll start with the bow of the boat here. So we have our little hangout area here. Got the hammock, and 
then of course uh, the uh, little that's Megan's little bow perch you know that she likes to hang out there uh, and then we go down this side and we got some uh, that's where we store our extra fuel and everything uh, and then the uh, the bumpers and all that and then uh, that's our dog uh, boarding device works okay see Maverick over there all right let's make our way back down here and this is the cockpit area here you see the little captain's chair there uh, and then of course we have our love seat which goose uh, spends most of his time on and then back over here just our dinghy hanging off the back right now we got some trash stored in it because uh, well we haven't been able to get rid of trash in a while they want like 25 bucks or something like that to cover it so and then we'll take you back down into the cabin all right Ow. So in the cabin, it's a nice little lounge area. Uh, pretty much every place we can store stuff or store stuff. I don't think we've turned on that TV once. Uh, anyway, uh, over here is, Ka is Admiral Bill Murray. He is uh, kind of watches over us. Uh, more storage stuff over here. And then of course to the quarter berth. Uh, and then back here we have rum storage at the moment, but we can clear that out and make some more room if we need to. Over here is the galley. Uh, so we have the oven and stove there, refrigerator here, you know, store stuff in there. More storage and everything here, uh, dry storage in there. And then up here we have the uh, forward V berth, uh, you know, where all the sleeping and clothes are done and all that stuff. And then uh, in here is the uh, the head, uh, as you can see, it's pretty small. Um, does have a shower. This raises up over here, and we have the shower area and everything like that. And the toilet, of course, it, it's a pump handle. Uh, ow! And then, all right. So this is the inside of the rough seas. What do you think? That's it. That's it. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like it. Well, there you have it. Bob and Megan doing a video of the rough seas. You know, they had a ball doing that you know they just had a lot of fun with Megan jumping around from spot to spot so it was pretty funny anyhow let's go ahead and look through the pictures and I'll kind of give you my perspective on some stuff okay let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the boat you can see here in the galley they show a pretty good view of the overall size of it I don't like the five steps going up out of the hatch that's a long ways for Miss Lily to have to jump to get in and out of the boat fortunately she can jump up onto the quarter berth there and get out much like uh, Maverick and Goose would do but I'm a little concerned about her being able to jump in and out um, going up won't be so bad for her as well as coming down but I know on my Cal 31 she just couldn't get up and down that galley maybe with some practice and some time she'll get it figured out and be better at it but it's gonna take a little time and effort to teach her how to do that lots of storage though bright airy open space I really like the lay of it um, really pleased with the interior of the boat I think it'll work very well for us lots of room there in the galley to move around now here you can see a view of the uh, electrical panel and the navigation station nav station looks plenty big enough plenty of room in that junk drawer for all the miscellaneous stuff that we collect uh, the panel looks like it's fairly well laid out I'm not sure what those wires are sticking out of the wall that seems a little odd to me uh, plenty of places to plug in some devices and stuff there and of course you've got the depth gauge which is nice to have there at the station to monitor make sure you're not running aground and I think that's a clock or possibly a barometer there on the wall up above I'm not sure which still it looks like a pretty nice nav station set up here's a better view of the electrical panel you can get an idea of how it was laid out now this is uh, interesting these are the controls for the solar controllers and the battery charger that uh, monitor the boat and these look like a brand new installation a typical hanging closet good place to get your clothes worn out as they move against each other as you're going through uh, the water uh, the head looks like a typical normal head to me um, plenty of room uh, even for my fat butt the sink looks a little oversized in here but I guess it's just the way they designed it but it looks like a typical head here we go back to the galley. You can see the refrigeration. Um, pretty good sized refrigerator. Looks like there'll be plenty of room in there. Looks like it's well designed, well built, well insulated. 
plenty of can storage and stuff. I mean, this is pretty massive. Now to the left of the range, it looks like there's another refrigeration unit possibly, or maybe it's just a cabinet that opens up for more storage, probably where the pots and pans and that kind of stuff go. I do like the cutting boards over the sinks and that railing in front of the stove. I'll make a, a belt harness for myself so I can clip in there. Uh, that way in a, in a moving sea, I can stay up against the stove and yet not get burnt by the hot stove. So something to concern ourselves with. But overall, I think the galley is plenty big enough, lots of room, well laid out, tons of storage. The salon looks great, plenty of seating in here, plenty of storage up behind everything, bright and airy. Uh, floors look like they need to be refinished. The V-berth looks great. Plenty of room up at the V-berth. Again, the wood looks like it needs refinished. Um, this is, uh, I don't know, some sort of weird tool. I don't know if this is installed or just sitting there. It looks like it's just sitting there. But anyhow, this is a controller for the uh, uh, solar chargers, I believe. The salon looks like just a nice big wide open airy spot. There's plenty of room down there, uh, plenty of storage uh, on both sides. Um, it's a nice open layout, plenty of room to get through. There's plenty of handholds. Now Bob's got some fishing rods sort of wrapped up onto the handholds on one side and that's fine if you only have a couple of three rods. I've got a bunch of rods and other fishing gear so I'm gonna have to figure out a little bit different storage situation for myself on the boat. I may put a tube up on deck and storm up on deck in a tube um, or a tube system maybe uh, or I'm gonna have to figure out something else to do here on the coach roof to have room for them in there but I don't know we'll see we'll see still it's a nice open space to work with. Now the quarter berth back here this is sort of interesting Bob used it for storage I think it's where Megan slept as well uh, although she may have just slept on the sides uh, of the salon. Uh, again, more storage in there. The nav station seat opens up right onto the quarter berth, which is nice. Um, again, pretty nice setup. It does look like the battery shutoff switch, though, is taped on. So I'm going to have to figure out what, I mean, it looks like they have duct tape holding it on there. So if you see that there at the bottom middle of the picture, I'm going to have to fix that obviously get it better mounted so it's safe well here's Megan out on the bow and the doodles one of the things I like about this picture and the reason why I included it well I didn't get very many pictures of the outside of the boat but uh, the netting up and around this looks like it's very well installed the tow rail on the CNC 37 is one where you can really lash that uh, netting all the way down to the bottom and get it good and secure so uh, I wouldn't even be surprised that in heavy seas, if I buried the bow a time or two, if, if I didn't net some fish with those, I mean, they look like they're pretty well secured. Nice for the dogs, nice for me to be able to walk around on deck. Uh, just a nice layout, so I'm glad Bob and them had those put on. And then here we can see the, uh, the bow of the boat with uh, Megan and the Doodles on there. Uh, some extra fuel cans, I don't know if Bob left those off to get some of my own to set up but uh, it looks like it's well laid out it's got a good windlass Bob put a new anchor on it uh, that's another improvement that he did um, so overall I think I'm getting a hell of a boat I really do I think I'm getting just one hell of a buy well there you have it old grandpa's gonna buy the rough seas you know what five o'clock somewhere folks we're celebrating tonight yeehaw grandpa bought a boat Oh, I don't like a cold beer. I'm celebrating. So yeah, I mean, you guys can't see me do my happy dance up here in Alaska, but believe me, I'm doing my happy dance a lot. I am thrilled. Got the property sold, contract solid, spoke to the banker already, everything's looking good. Uh, they're gonna do start the appraisal next week, so that's all awesome. We're supposed to close on the property August 15th, but knowing the appraisers and the banks, as I do, I'm a real estate broker, they're going to go over and delay and find some reason it takes more than necessary. But I promised Bob, the guy I'm buying the boat from, that I'm going to have the boat paid for by September 1st. So that gives me two weeks of, of shenanigans room. Hopefully I can get it done in that time. If not, I hope Bob understands that I'm you know, doing everything I can to move forward. Uh, timeline. So I am going to be up here till whenever we close, whenever I get the money. 
Uh, I'll be here for probably two or three days after that, wrapping some final, some last minute things up, doing some final cleaning, working with the uh, auction guys to load the rest of the stuff up here out of the cabin, get it gone, um, wrap it up stuff. Then I'm going to be heading out. I'm going to buy a small trailer to tow behind my truck so I can pack all my stuff into the trailer. That way I can throw my mattress in the back of the truck so I can sleep in the truck and not spend the chinks for motel rooms. Uh, I'm going to fry a couple chickens, um, make some sandwiches, that kind of stuff to haul with me. I estimate about a three day drive, if I can hustle, it will be about a three, maybe four day drive down to Montana. Uh, I'm going to be in Montana for two or three days, moving stuff around, getting stuff organized uh, so I can settle all that stuff out. I got an auctioneer company coming in. They're going to take all that stuff and sell it, but I've got to set some stuff aside for the ex-wife. Uh, so I'm going to get that organized. That'll take me three or four days, maybe up to a week. I don't know yet. Uh, September in Montana, weather should be nice. And then, uh, then I head to Ohio. I'll go visit my grandkids for a couple of days, say hello to the family there. Uh, won't be there very long because I'll just be sleeping in the truck and stuff. Uh, so I want to get done quickly. So I'll, I'll spend a day or two in Ohio saying hello to the grandkids and spending a little time with them. And then on to Florida. The deal is I'm going to fly to, I'm going to drive to Miami or Fort Lauderdale, fly from there down to Puerto Rico get the boat in Puerto Rico so I'll probably be in Puerto Rico for a couple of days there's uh this is really cool there's a West Marine store that I can actually go to by dinghy don't have to drive so the fact that I don't have a car won't matter there's a grocery store within walking distance of where the boat is at uh which is convenient so I can I can stock up with the groceries I'll need to get back to the states because that's going to be a 8 to 14 day adventure bringing it back uh, anyhow, and, and there's a there's a Costco there, so I can do a stock up if I wanted to. Uh, I'll do a small, just enough to get me back to Florida. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Puerto Rico, get the boat, and then immediately head back to Florida. Once I'm in Florida, I'll load the rest of the stuff out of my truck and trailer, clean them up and sell them. I don't know how long that's going to take. A week, maybe more. Probably more, because I'm going to hold out for top dollar. Um... Stock the boat up, really stock the boat up. This is going to be a huge stocking. I want to put on six months worth of food uh, because then I'm going to head to the Bahamas for the winter and uh, stuff's very expensive in the Bahamas. I'm just not going to have the money. So I'm going to have to buy a whole lot of can this and can that, which I really am not a big fan of. If any of you guys know me, I like to raise my own food and eat really healthy. I'm going to have to rely on a lot of factory stuff this time, but we'll see how that changes. Uh, anyhow, stock up the boat, and then I'm going to head to the Bahamas and uh, be there for the winter. There'll be lots of content coming along the way. I'll have video content of as we progress here in Alaska, as we make the drive down through the Alcan, through Canada, through Montana, through the Midwest, to Ohio, down to Florida, the flight over. I'm going to cover all that. There'll be video of all of that, probably do some live streams almost on a daily basis. I'll do some chats with folks. Uh, there is an opportunity for one or two people. If anybody would like to meet me in Puerto Rico, in San Juan, to bring the boat back up to Florida, there's an opportunity there for somebody if they want to do that. Um, all you would have to supply is your own food. I'll take care of all the other expenses, you'll, except you'll have to get yourself, obviously, to, to Puerto Rico. Uh, and so I'll pick you up there in San Juan. Um, you know, I can send an Uber to the airport for you if need, to, need be. And uh, then I'll drop you off once we're in uh, Florida. And you can, you know, go back home from there. So there is a cruising opportunity for one to two people if you want to come out and join me on the boat. Uh, that opportunity, because I need some crew. I need some people to be there on watch and stuff while I'm bringing the boat from Puerto Rico to Florida. Um, it should be a, drape, a straight downwind sail. The wind uh, and currents typically that time of year uh, should be ideal. Um, it's going to be a wing on wing downwind sail I think all the way. Uh, we'll be going from Puerto Rico over to the Dominican Republic up through the Bahamas uh, a little bit and then into uh, probably the Miami area. So keep that in mind. So there it is guys. I bought a boat. I bought it the wrong way, but I bought a boat. So where our adventure starts, we're going to start having a lot of fun. Please tune in and join with us and uh, 
and follow along. If you can, please check out the uh, Patreon page. There's a link for that down below. Greatly appreciate it if you want to join us on Patreon, support kind of what we're doing. I'm going to be doing a lot of different stuff than a lot of other cruisers, a lot of scuba diving, free diving, fishing, more of the uh, how to do this very inexpensively. I'm going to have to do it very inexpensively. I just don't have the budget. I understand that Gone with the Winds uh, said they were in the Bahamas for six months for $5,000. Of course, that was after they spent a fortune getting their boat very well equipped and, and set up for themselves. Uh, I don't know if I can do it that cheaply, but considering my budget, I may have to do it for even less. So we'll see. It's going to be tough, but uh, it's, it's going to be an exercise for me and a big change for me. Um, so please follow along. It should be an exciting time. So anyhow, guys, thanks. Tune in later. We'll catch you then. Whatever. Bye.